Entrando em contato com atendimento ao cliente. Para muitas pessoas é um jeito fácil de arruinar um bom dia. Mas na Zendesk, nós deixamos a experiência do cliente melhor. Melhor para sua avó, melhor para o seu vendedor preferido de flores, melhor para o cara do apartamento 3A, melhor para você, melhor para todos. Porque enquanto alguns dizem que o cliente sempre tem razão, nós dizemos que o cliente é sempre humano. E como seres humanos, queremos fazer algo melhor para todos nós. Zendesk, experiência do cliente com IA desenvolvida para humanos. Você que está ouvindo esse podcast e vive no trânsito entre uma reunião e outra, só um carro poderá te dar a segurança que precisa. O Volkswagen Taos. O SUVW com nota máxima em segurança e com sensor de ponto cego, assistente de faixa e muitos outros poderes. Taos, um carro com superpoderes. Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. I'm really excited about today's episode because we're going to be talking about recovery, emotional resilience, story of addiction. Today's guest, we have Jay Staples and his mission through his story is bringing authentic change by thinking differently and changing habits. And he's got a powerful message. So I'm, help, I'm happy to welcome Jay to the show. Welcome. Well, I'm, I'm honored to be here. I'm excited to be here. So uh, I'm an open book. So uh, uh, hopefully I can help someone here. So, yeah. Yeah. And that's why I have you on the show is, you know, hopefully this message will hit someone, inspire someone, kind of raise awareness um, and resonate with them. So kind of tell people your story, your struggles, how you overcame them, and we'll get into the meat of it. Ah, uh, well, how much time do you have? But, uh, you know, it's... Uh, <laughs> You know, as you can probably tell on my shoulder, I uh, grew up in Wisconsin. Um, you know, had a, I just believe that creativity and marketing, my dad owned a, uh, a small little ad, advertising agency growing up. And so I think that creativity and um, just marketing in general kind of oozed down into uh, just our fr family framework. I got two older brothers that uh, I think are fairly creative in, in marketing uh, backgrounds as well. So I grew up in, um my climb was was much like you know some other people my two older brothers kind of just went through college uh you know found jobs found wives are married have kids and you know just mm -hmm. lived uh, an incredible life like mine i i always have to make things interesting so um i started uh falling into golf uh well i, I wanted to be a professional golfer all through through my life and and played in junior tournaments and uh college tournaments and all kinds of different things and you know but what what really kind of derailed everything um as i was kind of trying to find my own you know path uh i I'm, you know i've learned that i'm a people pleaser and i and i put a lot of time energy into what others think and so i i, I lived the majority of my life what i thought um you know others wanted me to, wanted me to be no pressure from parents or loved ones it was just all self proclaimed self projection on me so i i fell into really really bad drug and alcohol uh abuse misuse addiction uh got in some legal trouble got in courts and uh which just led to health issues and financial issues and uh legal issues and job issues and authentic uh issues and and just completely lost uh you know, track who I was. So I, I, I've always had an advertising background, I, you know, between golf and, and advertising, that's really kind of how I uh, kind of, you know, ra was raised and so forth. I'd go back and forth working for my dad at his ad agency. I'd, you know, break out on my own, um, tried to be uh, getting in the golf business and playing that professionally or teaching professionally and just was completely lost. And in 2008, uh, thank God, uh, I think the world is, is, you know, is happy that, you know, I, I decided to cut drugs and alcohol away from my life. And, you know, little did I know that, you know, when I made that decision, you know, everything kind of rushed at me and it was just left with me and my solution, which has always been drugs and alcohol since I was 17, 18, um, you know, it was now kind of, I knew it was bad for me. I knew I couldn't turn uh, back to my, my one and only solution. I was left with just me. Um, and so since 2008, it's been, it's been a long, long journey of, 
kind of just finding things. I just got really, really fascinated with, you know, how we, how we process thoughts and, you know, our thought process and thinking process and habits and, you know, anyone that has any information, I went through seminars, I went through webinars, I sat in presentations, I, I waited in line to talk with people uh, that I thought would had a different, you know, perspective on thinking and so forth. And through the since 2008, became a, a life coach, a business coach, a recovery coach, uh, interventionist, um, everything basically, you know, minus a, a licensed clinician. Um, but through that, through that whole journey, what I realized was in 2008, I was miles and miles away from who I really, my authentically was as a person or who I was meant to be. And so since 2008, I've just been closing the gap and, and coming really, really in touch with, you know, who uh, I, I authentically am, my authentic principles, my authentic brand, my authentic pr personal brand, just how I authentically communicate. Um, and since doing that, um, started working with people, started working with companies, started working with communities. And, you know, I learned that, you know, my story is, is my story. And once I, I took back the pen and started writing my own story, and not letting other people write it for me that, you know, I was able to control the narrative and, you know, through thoughts and habits and, and life changes, my life story is, is someone, something that, that people are, are gaining inspiration from. And, you know, through it all, I never thought I would see myself as a life coach or business coach or what I call a creativity coach. I mean, it just, I just wake up each and every day. Um, it, it just goes to show you like, let, you know, tap into who you really are and who you authentically are and, and you don't know what's in store. So uh, I, although I saw myself as a professional golfer or, or a creative director at a big ad agency, here I am just, you know, creating my own little agency. We work with, uh, like I said, individuals, companies, communities, and we work directly with uh, authentic thinking, authentic communication and creative kind of rebranding. Yeah. I love that. Um, so, you know, it's a really powerful story. And I really think, um, I think the breaking point for the entire world was 2020 when basically we needed a world shutdown closure to make everybody reassess. And uh, one thing is talking about is, um, so you talk about these, um, uh, you know, I, I think our, our culture and our society is like, we have to have this picture perfect and you go to Instagram or all these TikTok and everybody's like, you know, smiling and all this, but it's like kind of like this cover up for what's happening. And 2020 basically showed that, um, talk about, it basically said that vulnerability, creativity, and authenticity are really powerful. So you can, you don't have to be uh, the Tom Brady with that image to make an impact. So kind of talk about being vulnerable isn't a sign of weakness. It's contagious. Well, I think, I mean, uh, I think there's, there's a lot of myths that people come into uh, the most common one that I, that I always come across with people that, that sit down in front of me or call the, for initial consultation is that, you know, they, they have this thought process that they can do it on their own, that they just <laughs> need to, you know, pull up their boots or, your, you know, flip flops, whatever you want to put on your feet, or, you know, just pull up your socks and, and they can figure it out on their own that, you know, uh, they don't need to reach out for help and they don't need support. And they, you know, if you can't do it on your own, it's not worth doing and all these other myths that I believe. So, you know, uh, and I believed a good portion of my life and that's what kept me kind of, you know, quote unquote sick. That's what kept me disconnected. That's what, you know, you know, basically throwing happiness away. I was seeing happiness and joy and contentment, peace, and it was just floating away really quick. And, you know, what I didn't realize was I was causing it to, to be pushed away. All I needed to do was be open and honest and, um, you know, to reach out for help and to just be open, honest, authentic um, with people. You know, I've, I've had, you know, some people in my, in and out of my life that, you know, weren't there for all the right reasons. And what I've learned since this whole journey and, you know, the 2020 shutdown is, has really stressed the importance because we were just left on our own and people were kind of trapped in their, in their houses or whatever it may be. And, and a lot of different issues came out of it. So 
I'm I'm glad to hear that I think more and more people are reaching for help. I'm glad that social media is an avenue to, that that we can spread hope and we can spread connection and we can spread all kinds. But you know, the other side is social media. What it also does is spread the narrative that you want people to to put out. And a lot of times that's playing different characters and, and that's a lot of time not really what you truly are. You just want to put out this you know, smiling or this beautiful steak dinner that you went out to, but inside you're just a mess. And so um, I think, you know, vulnerable, I think when you really start finding out who you authentically are, like when you truly authentically get connected with who you are as a person on the inside, minus all the stuff on the outside, minus what your business card says, minus who's, who's sleeping with you, you know, next to you or the cat, the dog, the size of the house, whatever it may be, you take away all that. And when you get connected with, authentically connected with who you are and in, you know, inside, I think that's the first step. You start getting vulnerable, you know, get vulnerable with the right people, you get connected. And once you get connected, you really can tap into creativity. Um, I, I just really think that that's kind of the domino effect. So, you know, people think that creativity is, has only been blessed with a, a, a few that not all of us are creative. And, you know, I challenge that that narrative. I, I believe that creativity is is personal um, in whatever you find. Everyone has a creative way of doing something. And, you know, once you find those authentic principles that, that you are, not what other people want you to be, when you find that, you can get creative and you can create. Creativity is basically creating and you can create whatever it is. Um, and it starts with, you know, the thought process, habit changings and getting vulnerable. Yeah. I love, I love this idea that everybody's creative because I think the school system and the media and all of our traditional institutions, they, they beat it out of us and they make it seem like, um, there's something wrong with us. If, you know, if we go off the beaten path, um, which is, uh, quite interesting and everybody is, um, you know, innately creative, which you talked about. Um, the other idea that you, um, espouse upon is, um, with, uh, with, um, changing your thinking and then changing your habits and how you live your life. Kind of talk about that. Well, uh, I mean, I think it's tough for, for people when I, when I bring it out and hold this imaginary mirror up to them and, and kind of take a look at what their thoughts um, are leading them to do. Like sometimes your mind is not your, your best friend. And sometimes your mind is the one that's kind of leading you down that path. And it's not the mind's fault. It's not the consciousness, unconsciousness, whatever. Those are just memories. It's the story. Like I always tell people, like, think of them, you know, think of like a movie projector. You sit in a movie theater, the, you know, the, you have the, you know, the mind, the energy you plugged into the movie projector, the, you know, your mind is the energy. And then your consciousness is like the light bulb or that thing that projects it up, you know, onto that big movie screen. And then your, uh, your thoughts is what the movie's actually playing. And so if you're sitting there watching your life story and saying like, I don't like how this movie is turning out. I don't like the plot twist. I don't like how it starts and realize that that's just your thoughts. Your thoughts are playing out in front of you. And so, you know, when, when your when the mind's not to blame, but your mind is just going through all the things you've said to it, all the things, all the memories, all the, you know, whatever it may be. And, and a lot of, you know, sometimes it's there to protect you. And, you know, when you, when you can control the narrative, when you can control that movie, which is controlling your thoughts and realize that, you know, the, the, the habits that you're forming um, start with a thought process. Like I, I hate going to gyms, you know, but I've <laughs> tried numerous times. I've hired probably 15 personal trainers through my career. I've, you know, went to the fancy gyms, the low key gyms, the local gyms, the gym far away. And, you know, I, I didn't see, you know, after a week of going to the gym, I'll look in, in the mirror and say, I don't see, I don't feel any different. I don't see any different, you know, so I quit and I walk away because, you know, with habits, you know, most people want to see kind of an immediate reward. And so, and, and more often than not, like the, the bad habits, more often than not are more immediate re rewards. If you want to drink too much or spend or shop or gamble or, you know, chase, you know, you know, opposite sex, same sex, you know, whatever it may be, 
you know, more often than not, those habits that you have are probably immediate rewards. And sometimes the the healthy habits and the healthy thought process, you won't necessarily see kind of immediate. It's going to the gym. And so if you, if you commit yourself to small changes, because I think, you know, if you're anything like me, I want immediate gratification. I want immediate change. And, and so what I always say to people is, you know, you don't have to be 100%. You don't have to get 100% better tomorrow because you're going to quit because you're, it's impossible to get that much better. Just get 1% better each and every day and know this and know that it's going to be a slow process, but we're setting the bar low. Just get 1% better each and every day. And if you continue to do that through, through small little habits um, and reward yourself for these habits, for a thought change, like consciously make give yourself some kind of reward, acknowledge yourself, whatever it may be. Because if, if you start, you know, to change a habit, a habit has to be ingrained in you. And so, you know, to get it ingrained and to have a healthy reward system and so forth and a healthy thought process, like the movie playing in front of you is going to be a lot more uh, enjoyable as you watch your life story. And, you didn't do anything other than small little thought changes and small little habit changes. You get 1% better each and every day. If you keep doing that, you're going to look back and you're going to be so far away from where you started. It's not going to feel like it, but you're just going to be like, whoa, I started way back there. And so if we get out of the mind frame of like, everything's got to change. Like if I'm going to change, I'm going to change everything. You know, that's where most people, the people that, you know, the clients that continually keep calling me, leave me for a couple months, call me and say my life hasn't gotten better. You know, more often than not, they want the, they want this huge change. They want everything. And so, you know, the people I see with successful and the, the successful entrepreneurs and the business people that I've had an opportunity to talk with and kind of get their mind frame around is just get 1% better each and every day. Um, and you know, you'd be shocked at how far you get. So. Yeah. I love that. And there's this, I, I love, there's this, um, this, uh, viral reel on, uh, on TikTok where it's talking about Kobe and basically I love starting a habit and I, and just giving yourself, let's say a week, two weeks, you know, a month, just basically the same thing every day and see how it goes. And, you know, what do you learn from that habit? How can you get better? And he's talking about just basically getting better, getting, getting in, going to getting into gyms, getting started it can be whatever it could be writing, you know, exercise diet. And basically what you're talking about getting 1% better. Um, you also mentioned this idea of these gifts of imperfection. And I love this because I love this idea because if you look at all across social media, people think, Oh, you got to have this like, you know, beautiful model or this like ripped, athlete or the celebrity and you have to spend tens of thousands on this one like but actually you just need um you just need a, a camera and you need an internet connection and you just basically start putting stuff up there so kind of talk people about these gifts of imperfection and how we sell ourselves short well i think i mean uh gary v i, I think if you if you know social media you know gary v i mean he says it uh, the best i mean the only thing preventing you is your own fear and how are you going to look and just you know, <laughs> going and having friends show up and be like did you really put that video on there and so um and that's exactly true i mean it can be true for a lot of different things whether it's social media posts or you know being authentic or showing up and or wearing whatever um you know, so often it's not. If you can go into a crowded room and be content with who you are and your feet squarely on the ground, that's the ultimate. Uh, that's the ultimate goal. And so, like, yeah, you know, it's just do it. Uh, I hate to get all Nike on people, but you know, I think fear for me, fear paralyzes me. Uh, it just, I just, I just freeze. And that's one of the reasons. That's one of the many ways that I've reached out to creative creativity and and so when i get into fear i know it paralyzes me and and sometimes i just have to be open and honest and say you know uh sorry i, I left you there i just got really paralyzed with fear what you mentioned what you said or you know just being open about that and then get real creative around that fear around you know not holding you back and not setting you back and that starts with a thought process and you know ch you know changing your thoughts but fear is powerful there's fear comes in thousand different ways and 
you know, if one way doesn't work, fear just has a way of doubling back and kind of going, trying a different direction. So fear prevents everything. So it's, you know, I, I see a lot of people talk about, you know, I, I love when people debunk, you know, kind of these fears and myths. Uh, you know, the one this morning I, I was online because I, I do about an hour of, of online scrolling every morning is kind of, you know, drinking coffee. It's just my morning <laughs> routine kind of, but you know, one yeah. person's, you know, there's, there's one person that's been debunking rules and it's like, you know, starting a company is really, really expensive. And he lays out with chat GPT and website. I mean, it actually costs zero. Like with all these apps nowadays, like starting a company really doesn't, isn't uh, as expensive as you think. Your mind's just telling you, your fear's telling you a different story. And so uh, Kobe is a prime example of, you know, someone that's kind of just beats his own drum and I miss the guy, but uh, his, his interviews, I've gone back, you know, several times and there's stories numbered, you know, that, you know, the guys are at the Olympics and they're all getting in at 4 a.m. And, you know, they pass Kobe in the, in the, in the lobby and he's well rested and headed to, to, uh, to work out. And so Kobe just always had that mind frame to, to be better and, and be himself. And he wasn't all about going out and partying and stuff like that. He enjoyed certain things, but um, I, I mean, you mentioned Kobe Bryant. I, my heart smiles every time because just a prime example of someone that uh, got 1% every better and, and kind of blazed his own path. But, uh, you know, fear, fear has a way of paralyzing us. Fear has a, a way of telling us lies or mind. So uh, more often than not, if you're not, if you're not willing to do something, sometimes you're not willing to it. And sometimes I check in with clients or people and say, are you willing to make these changes? Are you willing to get uncomfortable? Because sometimes it's going to be uncomfortable. But if you're willing to do it, then we can get creative and overcome that fear and, you know, surrender the outcome. Everyone wants this outcome. If I do this, I want the beautiful, uh, you know, spouse. If I get this, I want the big yacht. If I get this, you know, if we surrender those outcomes and how about if you just do this and you do what, you know, be impeccable with your word, one of the four agreements. And if, if we're being impeccable with our word to ourselves and follow through and surrender the outcomes, you know, sky's the limit for you. If we, cause sometimes our, our goals are actually like halfway to where we're capable of reaching. So I just, I tell people to surrender the outcomes and overcome one day at a time, get 1% better, do what you can today. Like if you want to, you know, post on social media, do one video uh, today, no matter what it looks like and just put it out and go from there. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's all about, you know, habits and, uh, and just be getting better. Um, one last thing is uh, how can, uh, before we, before how can guests contact you is, um, how did for those struggling with uh addiction or you know with uh these um vices or those struggling what is your number one advice number one tip and how can people reach you well i think um the number one thing is is kind of what we're kind of saying like you know making a video on social media like just reach out um yeah. you know whether it's me or someone else i mean get get it out into public air don't keep it in with yourself so if your spouse or loved one or family or whoever it is like just make a commitment to become authentic and reach out with someone uh and say that i'm struggling with such and such and such and such and sometimes they'll be completely shocked uh depending on on how well you're hiding it but the, the first key is what I always say, hit, allow it to hit public air because uh, healing heart starts when it gets to public air because if air can't get to it, you're just keeping it inside and pushing it down and moving it all around your, you know, stress, anxiety, depression, you know, thought process, it, it, it shifts all over your body sometimes, but we're just pushing it down, get it into public air. Uh, if they want to reach out to me, uh, you can go to Sober Caddy Creative Agency uh, there's a contact form there. Uh, I still love uh, seeing those. So you'll you'll reach me directly. It's not my assistant. It's not anyone here at my agency. I still love reaching out. So I, I'll be more than happy to direct you in in simple resources or, or or things to do and or whatever it may be. But 
you know, the the most important thing is to get it in the public air. It's going to feel so much better when you do. And I'm not I'm not going to force you to to do anything. Once again, we're not going to push you down one path. We're going to surrender the outcome. All we're going to do is or ask you to do is get it in the public air, get it out, get start, start being held accountable and whatever you're willing to do do to, you know because of it let's let's kick into action there because change only happens is if if you're willing to do it so you know a lot of people uh you know think that they you're going to be forced to do things and and so forth my question is always are you willing to do this are you open to it and are you willing to to whatever it may be and if they say eh, you know i don't no one's automatically going to scream yes but if if there's some hesitation if there's some openness if there's a small amount of willingness uh to do something different um that's that's when change happens so you know the decision to get open you know to be open and vulnerable and get into public air you just started change you started something and let's just empower it we're not going to push anything on you there's no outcome, you know, you're not going to go to a 30 day treatment center or whatever. A lot of people get fear. Uh, sometimes it's just sitting down with a therapist. Sometimes it's just uh, finding a support group, uh, whatever it may be. If we can get better one day in 1% of the time, one day at a time, then uh, let's do it. And if I can be, a, a you know, if I can be a, a small part of it, you can also reach me uh, on all pretty much all social media platforms, Sober Caddy. Um, on, on all kinds of social media. I think I'm probably the only sober caddy out there. So you'll probably find me, but uh, excited to just kind of, you know, be a, a small beacon of hope and help uh, for all your, your you know, viewers and listeners. Yeah, I love that. And I love this. I love how you linked uh, habits and overcoming addictions and struggles. Just get started, get it out there. And uh, for all the audience out there, uh, Jay Staples will, Resources will be in the links and show notes. And let's thank him for a fantastic episode. Excited.